Welcome back once again to the front porch. Time for another episode of Monday Meditations. If you would grab your Bibles and open to the book of Psalms, we're going to look at Psalm 119, just the first eight verses of it today. I want us to consider this longest chapter in God's Word. It focuses on just that, the law of God, the Word of God. Over and over again, it's mentioned in this great psalm. And the psalms, of course, were songs that were written. They were poems, style writings that were meant to encourage and to motivate and and also bring back the focus where it needs to be, and that is, of course, on God. Most likely, David wrote this psalm, but I want us to consider something that maybe we take for granted. We take a lot of things for granted in life. I dare say you, you would have to agree with me on that, especially this book that I hold in my hand, the Word of God. I have many copies of the Bible. I have many different hard copies. I have I have the Bible on my phone. I have it on a, on tablets, on my computer. Ways to access the Word of God. If you have internet connection in any way, you can easily read and study the Word of God. But how often do we really focus on it and meditate upon it like we're doing today? How often do we take for granted God's Word, the power of God's Word. There are many who are very religious people. They're very conscientious people, and they're looking for some experience and some feeling and some, God, do something for me, and God, tell me something, and He's given us all that we need right here in His Word. As a matter of fact, that's how this this psalm is broken down. This chapter is broken down by the, the Hebrew alphabet. And the first eight verses is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And you can break it down in those paragraphs and study through this long chapter in that way. But let's go ahead and go through these first eight verses by way of Monday meditation. And, and hopefully help us to not take for granted the Word of God, the power of the Word of God. Look at verse 1, Psalm 119. It says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. The undefiled, there's, there's nothing that is sinful in their lives that's defiling them. It doesn't mean that they're sinlessly perfect. Uh, no one can attain that. Jesus was the only one. If, if man could attain sinless perfection, we wouldn't need the Savior. We wouldn't need the Christ. But he says, blessed, this inner joy and happiness is had by those who are undefiled, who are complete in that sense, in the way the way that they should live, living up to the potential that God has put within each one of us. How do they do that? They walk in the law of the Lord. Not in the law of self, not in the law of culture, not in the law of the world, but in the law of the Lord. And we do that by going back to his precepts and, his, and the word that we have in front of us. Verse number two, he says, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Okay, so not only do they walk in the way, the way of the law of the Lord, they keep those testimonies. They keep the commandments that God has given. Hold them fast. I don't want to break them. I don't want to go beyond them. I don't want to fall short of them. I want to do what God says because God has given so much. God has done so much for us. I want to do what he says. And I seek him. I look for him. I long for him. But I do it not partitioned in my life. I do it with my whole heart. With all of my being, I'm seeking the Lord with my whole heart. That's the person who's going to be blessed. That's the person who's going to have that inner peace and that joy. Going back to the text, now look at verse 3. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Again, it seems a little confusing It just at face value. We read this and we talk about well, no one's perfect in all sin, but he says here that they, they do no iniquity. It's the same reading that we have in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9. In chapter th 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9, talking about not sinning and we're staying in God doesn't mean that we never sin. We know that from the first chapter of 1 John. We say we have no sin. We deceive ourselves. Truth is not in us. That's verse 8. And so what does it involve then? It involves what he says in the latter part of that verse. They walk in his way. You know, each one of you who are listening to this at this time, most most. Most assuredly, the majority of us, if not almost all of us, walk. I know there's some situations that cause people the inability to walk. Some were born that way. Some have accidents, I understand. But most of us walk. Now, having said that, I know for myself and for you as well, we haven't always walked perfectly. We've fallen before. We've tripped. We've, we've had those spills. We've had those falls. But just 
Imagine what it would look like if the first time you tripped and fell, you never walked again. You just didn't get back up. Well, no, we walk because it doesn't mean we never fall. It means we keep on walking. And these are people he's talking about that are blessed. They're the ones who, who do know iniquity. They're not continuing to walk in iniquity. They're continuing to walk in God's way, according to God's law. Or as First John 1 talks about walking in the light. And, of course, in this same book, in this same chapter, in verse 105, the light is the word of God. We walk in the light, the light that's the lamp to our feet and the light to our paths. He says, verse 4, Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. You've commanded, you've put this ordinance upon us and for our own good. But what is that commandment? To keep thy precepts. Again, that concept of law and, and, and direction, to keep that diligently. Putting forth a lot of effort into this. It's not going to come by happenstance. We're going to have to want this. God could have made us programmed robots that we do exactly what he says and we have no choice in the matter. But he gave us that free will to choose over and over again from the very beginning of time in Adam and Eve in the garden. He gave them choice. Choice to, to dress and keep the garden as he said. Choice to eat of every tree of the garden. And choice not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The day you eat thereof you will surely die, he tells them. They chose wrong. And of course sin and death was brought into this world. But we also can choose to follow Christ, follow his testimonies in the new kingdom, the new age, the church age, this new covenant that God has made with mankind. We can choose to follow Christ and be justified. He's commanded us to do this. And that means there's going to be consequences if we choose not to. But there's also consequences in a good way to choose in doing this and following his precepts diligently, putting forth that effort. Verse 5. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. That's a that's a exclamation point there at the end of that. He's he's exclaiming, oh, what it would be like if if my way was directed to keep your statutes. If I if I didn't have a choice in this, if I just would do it. That means he realizes his frailty and his weakness and his need for God. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes, that I had no choice in this matter. But I do have choice, and I'm praying for help. I'm pleading, I'm pleading to God for help that I will keep his statutes, that I will walk in his ways. Verse 6 says, Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. You see, it's difficult in this world to try to live for God because of all the pressures of the world around us. When we're trying to stand for God, the world wants to pull us back down into that darkness. We're trying to, to walk in that light of the gospel, the light of God's word. The world wants us to, to come back into the darkness with them. It doesn't want us to, to shine that light of good upon that world. They want us to be like everybody else, to fit in, to go along, to get along. And, and the psalmist is saying here, if my ways were just forced upon me, I had no choice in this, there's no way I would feel ever ashamed to have respect unto all thy commandments. To want to do what you want me to do, God, I would never feel guilty looking around at my friends and co-workers and the people in this world around me. But he's not going to give up. Verse 7, he says, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I'm going to do what's right, but I need learning. I need education. I need to study your precepts. I need to study your judgments, your commands, and so I can have them firmly fixed. We'll see that in the next letter, the next time. We're going to continue in this study in the next. I want to go ahead and read verse 8, though. I will keep thy statutes, O forsake me not utterly. What would it be like to not have God in our lives? What would it be like to have God forsake us completely? The psalmist understood how dire that would be, how difficult that would be. And he's praying and he's pleading. Note the responsibilities that he puts upon himself in that first few eight verses of this psalm. The emphasis on being happy and being blessed is contingent upon being right with God. That doesn't mean it's a checkbox situation. Please don't understand it that way. That's, that's a terrible concept. But it is, I'm going to see what God wants from me, and I'm going to do with all of my heart, with all of my diligence, everything I can to bring glory and honor to Him. Look at what God has done for us. 
and what he expects from us is not that difficult. The ways of the Lord are not grievous. The ways of the Lord are a blessing to us. The ways of the world may seem easy in the moment, but the end, they are grievous. To be on the wrong side of such a wonderful and great God. I don't want to be there, and I don't want you to be there, and I don't think you want to be there either. You wouldn't be watching an episode of Monday Meditations. Let's go back to the Word of God. Let's go back to God's precepts. Let's focus on them. Let's give Him our whole heart and study diligently to be approved unto God. Be those workmen who don't need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. That's something on which we can meditate this Monday and every day. May God bless us all as we walk in the light of God's Word. Until we meet again, God bless you.